Assalamu alaikum everyone. Um, it's 10.15. Uh, so we're going to uh, formally start this program, uh, this webinar. Um, this is the blessed month of Ramadan, so it's appropriate that we start with the word of divine. Auzu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Fatahu Allah sawabu dunya wa husna sawabu al-akhirah. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. And Allah gave them a reward in this world and the excellent reward of the hereafter. For Allah love muhsineen. So those of you who have visited Habib University, uh, this is the verse that's inscribed on the wall that we call the wall of Mohsinin. Uh, Mohsin is a term that is derived out of um, the general Arabic root of Husn and Hassan. Our mission statement is Qimatukulli Imri Ma Yohsanahu as well, is derived from that. But very importantly, it's very appropriate for today's event because this is, uh, as it says, preserving legacies and protecting futures. Um, we are very, very fortunate as a university, as an institution, to be couched in the legacy and the community of Mohsini. Um, so that's why this is um, an ayat which is close to our heart. You're seeing on your screen uh, uh, the speakers and the, the, the hosts of today's event, and I'm going to be introducing them in a second. Um, first, um, those of you who have been to Habib University have seen the wall of Mohsineen and probably have seen me uh, and have met me. Um, so I have been sporting. This is not my quarantine hairstyle. This is the hair that I usually keep. So if you wanted to know who is the true visionary who saw this coming, that would be me because I have been keeping this hair for, for the last three years. And, and, and the other true visionary and we're fortunate to have him in our university as our vice president of academic affairs. You can see his picture, Chris Taylor, who left New Jersey just in time um, before uh, uh, what, what, whatever is unfolding there. So, uh, so I wanted to just start by acknowledging um, ourselves. But um, coming back to our wonderful topic, preserving legacies and protecting futures, uh, today is a wonderful, bittersweet day for remembering the legacy um, uh, for which Habib University is named after. So as you know, um, uh, one of the thrusts of today's event is to pay tribute to our stalwart that we lost so untimely, uh, Ali Suleiman Habib, uh, about a month ago. Uh, but also today is uh, the Islamic death anniversary of the patriarch of the Habib family, Muhammad Ali Habib, the father of our chancellor, uh, who passed away on 21st of Ramadan, and also his um, Christian calendar birthday. So there is something cosmic going on regarding legacies and Habib legacies for today. So um, the legacy essentially um, which was triggered in Pakistan, led by Muhammad Ali Habib, then the vision carried on by his sons, especially uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, uh, our Chancellor Rafiq Muhammad Ali Habib, RMH, uh, who, who envisioned this university and then was very ably supported by uh, Ali Suleiman Habib, uh, who, whom we lost again untimely, uh, is the reason that we are hosting, we are here and we're hosting this event. This was a visionary legacy, which essentially initiated the creation of phenomenal institutions in this country. And we wanted to connect the question of legacies with future. So any society, any family, and it, it is true for a society, which has a sense of preserving its legacy is essentially is best positioned to protect the futures of its, um, its inheritance and its generations. Hence the title, Preserving Legacies and, and Protecting Futures. And we hope that we'll be listening from our speakers on this theme and, and paying tribute to this wonderful um, legacy of our community and especially of the founding family. 
But before we get there, I just want to acknowledge uh, the wonderful hosts of today's event. And uh, their screens are on and you all can see them. Uh, uh, our Resource Development Committee of Habib University Foundation is led by Bashir Ali Muhammad. Um, those of you who have passed through Pakistan anytime, you must have seen um, um, uh, the, the, the phenomenal business presence that Bashir Saab and, and his family has. Uh, but more importantly for us, he has been a founding member of our, foundation, of our foundation and has led our resource development committee, which has been instrumental in uh, bringing this community together to continue to support Habib University. Uh, thank you, Bashir Saab. Then we have Nargis Surti. Um, Nargis Surti is, um, is the CEO of Surti Enterprise. Um, again, uh, 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 one of the more uh, uh, inspiring and charismatic business leaders in Pakistan. But of course, uh, one of the very early supporters of Habib University, even before we had the foundation to put her on the board of, uh, she was there stepping up and showing her support to the university. Uh, so Nargis Surti is, a, of course, a prominent member of Resource Development Committee. We have Arif Habib Saab, who is a, a famous business leader in Pakistan. E even before he joined our board, he hosted us uh, and essentially gave Habib family the encouragement um, that this is a great project that we need to carry on with. And we owe a lot to him. And he is now a member of our Resource Development Committee. Shahbaz Yasin Malik is here. Um, again, uh, one of the key aspects of Habib University is that we are able to uh, admit students um, completely need blindly from all backgrounds. And particularly his support is instrumental in ensuring that. Um, Habib University owes a lot to Shahbaz and especially his uh, contribution in resource development committee. Muhammad Ali Rafiq Habib uh, is here. He again uh, along with Nargis. Actually, I met Nargis at his house for the first time. This was in 2012. This was two full years before we had the university. So he, he essentially has been uh, ensuring, quietly leading the community development for Habib University. And, and he, of course, uh, is part of our resource development committee who, is in, who has convened this event. Tofiq <clears throat> Chinoisa, um, one of our uh, most respected senior business personalities in the city and a philanthropist. Again, has been uh, shoulder to shoulder with, with Rafi Habib Saab, uh, continuously encouraging and, and, and ensuring that we pursue this dream and this vision of Habib University. Uh, Tawfiq Saab is, has been part of our resource development committee from the very beginning. Uh, Zahida Habib, um, again, I, I am trying to sort of jog my, my memory um, that uh, very early on started to encourage us, host us, open her network for us to uh, uh, essentially just introductory events regarding Habib University back in 2012, 13, again, before university started and, and is tirelessly always helping us to, to uh, convene the community to understand the mission and the story of the university. And of course, Amina Sayed, who has been no stranger to uh, Karachi cultural and literary groups, uh, essentially pioneer of uh, publication in Karachi and, and, and literature festivals um, and has been a member of our resource development committee. Thank you so much. We are indebted, uh, we are honored, uh, we are humbled uh, by your support. Thank you for convening this event. Thank you for inviting your friends and families um, to, um, to come and, and see. This is again is a, is a celebration and a tribute to legacies, especially the legacy of uh, Habib family and, and uh, just the recent lot, loss of Ali Suleiman Habib. Uh, so this has been, a, I'm sure, will be a, a great comfort for the family itself. We have two, again, um, I'm going to be in detail introducing our speakers, Raza Aslan and, 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 and Azra Raza a little bit later, but we have two more speakers tonight. Um, we are honored to, uh, uh, the, the event will be closed by our chancellor, um, Rafi Habib. Um, he's there on the screen and, and um, again, in, in their difficult times still, um, Ali Suleiman Habib's family is going to be represented by Imran Habib, uh, who is Ali Habib's older son. Uh, so he'll be speaking today as well. Um, I don't see him on, on screen, but he, inshallah, he'll be part of the program. So thank you everyone. And now we're going to uh, move forward. 
uh, with uh, uh, with our uh, uh, our speakers. So <clears throat> I want to I printed this in like 22 font the introduction so I because I don't want to get a word wrong about um, the, the 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 two results that we have um, in 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 today's event. Although they spell their result differently, um, but nevertheless, uh, we are fortunate to have them. So starting with um, Dr. Azra Raza. Um, she's Chan Soon Chong, Professor of Medicine and Director of um, Myelodysplastic Syndrome Center at Columbia University. Now, if anyone wants to, to know what a Renaissance person is, and if they open any kind of dictionary, probably you will see her picture instead of any of the description, right? I have not met uh, any person in my life who can, in one sentence, move from describing myelodysplastic uh, syndrome to Mirza Ghalib with complete effortless ease, right? Um, we often internally talk about it. If there were an ideal Habib University alumni, what would it look like? And we all agree it would look something like uh, Dr. Azra Raza. Uh, her latest book, uh, The First Cell and the Human Cost of Pursuing Cancer to the Last, somewhat captures her intellectual breath. It's a paradigm changing book on how medical science should approach cancer, the most, uh, the longest running pandemic actually in the world, which is cancer. Uh, and it has received critical acclaim for its brilliant personal and scientific understanding of encountering this devastating illness and suggesting um, visionary solutions that how humanity can actually overcome uh, this menace. Dr. Azraza, we are honored to have her as the chair of our Habib University Foundation in the US. And she is a very close friend of the Habib family, especially uh, a very close friend of uh, late Ali Habib and Munize Habib. So she'll be speaking uh, uh, in the program. Then we have um, our wonderful uh, Raza Asla. He is um, an internationally renowned writer. Uh, came to push back at post 9-11 world Islamophobia. He was one of the leaders to push back at that, uh, that toxic trend. Um, Islamic world especially owes a lot to him. Um, he is a scholar of religious history He's the author of um, many international bestsellers, including No God, But God, um, The Origins, Evolution, and Future of Islam, Zealot, The Life and Times of Jesus of Nazareth, and, and very recently, A God, A Human Story. As a keen observer of culture and media, Dr. Riza has a unique vantage point into the world, which makes his work even more crucial and relevant in this very challenging, confusing, and complex time. Uh, we had the honor of hosting him as our Yosin speaker, which is the, the most, the, the biggest flagship lecture that we host uh, and last year in 2019. He was also the convocation speaker at Habib University for class of 2019, the lucky class. We don't know when will we have a proper convocation next. Um, and he was, during his visit, was hosted by, very fondly by Habib family, especially by late Ali Habib and Munize. Uh, I'm sure he, he will have fond memories when he will speak about that, right? So, so these are our uh, wonderful keynote speakers. I will start uh, by inviting um, Azhar um, to essentially capture um, this conversation regarding preserving legacies and protecting futures um, uh, in the context of uh, the phenomenal um, story of Habib family as well as um, this uh, inspiring legacy that they have uh, rooted in Pakistan. Adrapa. Thank you, Wasif. The suddenness of Ali's departure has left us all disoriented. What will bring a modicum of closure to the painful loss is to invoke the two things that mattered most to Ali. First, the love of his family. To his beloved wife, Munize, I say this. We can only show you how much we, we care through a lifetime of friendship, appreciation, and respect. Pro 
provide you with some solace, I will rely on Ghalib. In one of his famous elegiac puzzles, Dard se mere hatuchko beqarari hai hai Kya hui zalim teri ghaflat shiari hai hai Tere dil mein gar na tha aasho be gham ka khosla Tu ne phir kyun ki thi meri gham busari hai hai Sharm e ruswai se ja chupna naqab e khak mein Khatm hai ulfat ki tujh pe pardedari hai hai now I come to the share because of which I read the first three. Umr bhar ka tu ne paimane wafa bandha to kya? What if you pledged a lifetime of fidelity? Umr bhar ka tu ne paimane wafa bandha to kya? Umr ko bhi to nahi hai paidari hai hai. Alas, even lifetimes don't embrace eternity. To Ali Habib's children, Alize, Imran, Mikhail, you've lost a parent suddenly. Your children have been bereft of a doting grandfather. Our hearts go out to you. You know, my daughter Shahrazad lost her father when she was eight years old, and my husband died after battling five years of a leukemia. She was heartbroken, but that year when Father's Day came around, I woke up in the morning, came to the living room. There she was, this eight-year-old child sitting with a card in hand, handmade card saying, Mommy, from this day on, you are both my mother and my father. Can I take you out to dinner tonight? And in the last 17 years, she has not missed a single Father's Day, complete with loving messages and family dinners. I urge you, children of Ali and Munize, to spoil and pamper your mother on every occasion from now on, just the way your father would have done. But then being a Habib, there is the noblesse oblige, the responsibility of the privileged, to act with generosity and nobility. You too have a responsibility towards the community of children who depended upon your dad to care for them. You owe it to your father's memory to double your efforts in caring for what mattered to him most after the family. And that is the grand institution that he helped start Habib University. I know that all three of you will take this responsibility seriously and you will make your mother, your own children, all of us, and above all, your father, very, very proud. Now I turn to the patriarch of the house of Habib, the Honorable Rafiq Habib Sahab. My mother was generously patronized in her social and charitable endeavors in the post-partition Karachi by the great Sakarbai, mother of Rafi Khabib. I had the honor of meeting her when I was a little girl and when I accompanied my mother on some of her missions. What an imposing, dignified figure she cut, and yet so down to earth so impassioned about humanitarian causes, so inspiring. It's no wonder that under such an outstanding matriarch, the Habibs flourished and acquired even higher status and positions, but yet remained committed to serving humanity. Rafiq Saab, you have done justice to the splendid Habib legacy. You were a mentor to Ali. We offer you our condolences on your horrible loss. But at the same time, I'm confident that the joint venture that you initiated with Ali, the Habib University, while losing a patron in Ali, 
is gaining the lifetime commitment of four more formidable Habibs, Munize, Alize, Imran, and Mikhail. The house of Habib will continue to come together like never before in this moment under your extraordinary mentorship. And instead of feeling discouraged, instead of feeling lost by Ali's tragic death, and let despair take over, this very hopelessness can serve as the helium to lift the spirits of the students and faculty. We need the House of Habib more than ever today to stick to their traditions like never before. And for you, Rafiq Saab, to inspire the next generations of Ali, Munize Habib, to carry on the work he left unfinished. And finally, I offer my sincerest condolences to Wasif Rizvi, the president of this university, Last time I met him in person was earlier this year. He arrived in New York one evening bearing a letter from Ali and Rafiq Habib inviting me to be the commencement speaker this May at Habib University. Little did I know in accepting that fantastic honor that instead of a commencement address, I would be giving this eulogy for Ali. To Wasif, and to the faculty and amazing staff of Habib University, and most of all to the students of Habib. This is what I, my message is. Come, my friends, it's not too late to seek a new world. And though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that force which in olden days moved heaven and earth, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Thank you. Ali Habib, Zindabad, Habib University, Zindabad, long live the house of Habib. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Azarapa. We'll, we'll loop back to you uh, for, for more conversation. Um, so it's my great honor to, to invite uh, Raza Aslan um, to, to share his comments, um, especially, um, you know, of course, his memories of visit to Pakistan and then meeting with uh, late Ali Habib and his family, but of course, um, giving some insight regarding um, uh, the challenge that all higher education faces in, in, in this very complex time. And, and, and how he will uh, give us some, some, some ideas to navigate this. Raza, please. Thank you, Wasif. Um, hello, everyone. And uh, I, I hope that everyone is having a blessed Ramadan. Um, I'm calling you here from Los Angeles, uh, in California. And we, of course, have been thinking about the Habib family, my wife and I. Um, as many of you know, I was the commencement speaker last year, and I had the opportunity not just to experience the university in, in Karachi, but I had the um, opportunity to go to the Habib house, to meet with Ali and Munizeh, to hang out with Imran, get to know him a little bit, talk surfing with Mikhail, see Alize, um, and when I heard the news, my heart was absolutely broken. Just, I, I'm devastated for you. And what I think about most was the, the warmth and the hospitality that I experienced in, in the Habib house. And it's those memories that I think are at the forefront of my mind. And uh, Obviously, it's a, it's a devastating thing to experience. It's something that it's even difficult to put into words. I'm no poet, so I can't do so. But all I can say is that when I think about Ali, what I think about is the kindness, the warmth, the, the gentleness, and the love that he showed. 
showed and the way that that gentleness and hospitality was so obvious in his family. Um, I truly hope that I get to continue uh, this relationship with the Habib family because his legacy is alive in all of you. Um, I was thinking, you know, about this the other day. We, Wasif and, and Christopher and I were talking about the difficulty that not just Habib University, but all universities right now are having. As many of you know, I'm also a professor. And so I've had to go through this entire process of having to figure out how to teach online with distance learning. And I think maybe like a lot of professors, I began thinking that this would be easier. I don't have to commute to school. I don't have to, you know, maintain uh, the, the complex uh, balance of, of a classroom. Uh, I could just do it, you know, in my pajamas uh, from my office at home. And it has been a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, teaching online has been so much more difficult. It's been so much more taxing or costly for me and for the university. And it really, I think, in many ways is a wake-up call to the fundamental difficulties that a liberal arts education has been having across the world right now in the midst of this pandemic. Um, even here in the United States, you know, uh, I teach at a liberal arts school and it's very difficult, I think, for a lot of my students who are facing death and destruction and uncertainty and who are filled with anxiety and fear. It's very difficult for me to say to them, let's read some literature. Let's talk about history. Let's talk about culture. It's not what their minds are. But it is also, I think, an important reminder this experience that we're having now about just the importance of those things, how a liberal arts education at a time of existential crisis like this is even more vital, even more important than we think that it, it is. The notion that we can teach young people how to think critically and rationally, for instance, at a time in which we are being bombarded with nonsense and propaganda and fake science and lies and conspiracies. Um, it, it, uh, the, the idea that we can think historically, that we can teach um, our young people about history at a time in which what we need more than anything else is perspective, at a time in which far from looking at the immediate present and the uncertainty that it brings instead, being able to expand our horizons and think um, from a historical perspective uh, and to really understand what this moment means when it comes to the long history of our human experience. Those are the kinds of things that can be fostered when it comes to a liberal arts education. And so as a professor of liberal arts, I've kind of gone through a little bit of, a, of an up and down. I, I went through a moment of thinking, what is the point of all this at a time like this to suddenly realizing that there is in a sense nothing more important than the ability to teach kids, young people, the future of our world, um, how to think, how to have broader perspectives, how to understand culture, how to foster rational thinking, um, and how to cultivate those minds that hopefully, we all hope, will one day be the minds that will rid us of these kinds of pandemics, these kinds of emergency experiences. And so that, of course, has brought me to why I continue to be a supporter of Habib University and why I immediately said yes when Wasif and Chris asked me to be a part of this conversation. I don't need to tell you this. You know this better than I do, that as difficult as access to higher education is in large parts of South Asia, it's even more difficult when it comes to a liberal arts education, the kind of education that Habib has immersed itself in and the kind of education that I think is vital to healing the planet um, in, in this time and age right now. There are, of course, a very small percentage of students that have the opportunity to take advantage of a of education like this. And 
many of those students have the intellectual capability, but of course not the financial ability to do so. One of the things that I learned very, very early on about Habib when I, when I began uh, my relationship with it was that it's not a kind of school that can be tuition based, right? It just, it can't work that way because of the students that it reaches out to. And so it needs to mobilize the community for support. Um, it needs the, the legacy, certainly of the Habib family, but of the larger community, um, the, the enormous wealth and opportunities that so many in South Asia have had. That's what it has to tap into in order to be able to do what it has promised um, <clears throat> that it would do. And of course, the pandemic has made that <laughs> far more difficult. Um, it's made it more difficult, certainly for these students, to actually be able to reach their capacity, to, to reach their potential. But it's also made it more difficult for donors to actually step up. Um, it's certainly stretched their capacity as well. And I get it. It's very difficult to think about things like higher education, certainly liberal arts education, uh, at a time of existential crisis. I mean, when there is so much going on where all our minds are on things like PPE and, and food services and the fact that you know poverty is going to continue to surge, that world hunger is going to surge, that mass unemployment is going to disrupt systems and, and societies, that we really don't know, you know how much further this pandemic is going to go and what it's going to, to wreak uh, in the world, here in the United States, in Pakistan, throughout South Asia. We just don't know. And so sometimes things like education become a lower priority. And while that's understandable, the reason that I want to be even more active right now, and I certainly hope that others are too, is that if we do not focus on this next generation, then we're going to lose not just uh, an access to an entire cohort, you know, people who are, who are unsupported and who need our help, but we're going to lose our future because the truth of the matter is that the university is still, to this day, the, the best institution to support long-term change, long-term progress, long-term stability. Um, I was joking a little bit before we started here when someone asked me how things are going in the United States that uh, things are great because of, you know, how stable and competent uh, our genius president is. But jokes aside, if we are going to survive more periods like this and more periods are coming, it's not going to be this generation, the generation that is leading us now, that's going to pave the way. It's going to be the next generation, the generation that we are responsible for fostering and for educating. The only way that we can build the leaders to deal with crises like one that we're facing is by giving them precisely the kind of liberal arts education that Habib University has dedicated itself to. So I am in, I hope everybody else is in. Um, I thank you for the time. I, I know that we have a little bit of time for some want to, but um, I just wanna thank you once again for the opportunity to allow me to be a part of this exciting um, university. And I think the future is very, very bright. The legacy of Ali Habib is in the soil of this university. And I think it, it will be there forever. Oh, thank you, Reza. I, um, you know, I, I there, is a, there is a position for sort of director to advocate Habib University just opened up and, 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 and we know, um, just the person for that. Thank you so much for these emphatic words of support. Uh, you have made my uh, job for Segway a lot easier. Um, you know, which is our mission statement, is translated as 
thoughtful self cultivation right so that's essentially is at the heart of habib university's mission to have thoughtful and cultivating citizens and ensuring that they are in various leadership um roles in society um the the to ensure that they come from all backgrounds so they have deeper roots uh to continue to be part of the society in this part of the world and take the leadership positions with that kind of critical consciousness to navigate this very challenging and difficult world that is ahead of us so thank you so much and um adrapa i just want to sort of reengage you um so you know um, uh, two fundamental thrusts of the university are um, uh, a transformative intellectual experience and and the second one is to ensure um universal access whoever is able to get in uh, in terms of their intellectual merit habib university is has pioneered uh, programs uh, to ensure that we have students from all backgrounds uh, and this was made possible this has been made possible uh, by the extraordinary generosity of the wider community um you know so the legacy the habib legacy has been a magnet to rally a greater community around and it has not happened before in pakistan a higher education is not something which is was automatic on anyone's list to support but we have been fortunate and there are many people in the audience who have stepped up and supported but as raza indicated now the scandal is pressed from both ends so students needs have increased and um, maybe the priorities and even the resources of many supporters would be pressured uh, so what what is what what is your wisdom in in regards to the the challenges that that are very stark thank you very much again wasif uh, very timely question uh, first i want to say that i am a huge fan and admirer of raza aslan um he has said most of the things i wanted to say and far more eloquently already the importance of liberal arts education especially in uh, this day and age um <clears throat> as you know i am an oncologist i see 40 cancer patients a week i have been doing this for decades sadly i walk many of them to their deaths you know the only good news that we can give our cancer patients is that it's detected early and we can get rid of it for a long time i've been committed to the idea that if only we could try to catch the first cells as they are being formed in a malignant situation before it becomes that full fledged bona fide end stage monstrosity that we need to slash poison and burn in order to try and get rid of it can't we reach that first cell level the idea is simple that instead of checking for cancer once a year the way we are doing it right now with mammograms pap smears psa colonoscopies etc we should monitor the human body constantly as if it's a machine the healthy human body to catch the first cell this is what we are going to do and mark my words the decade of 2020 to 2030 will see a complete revolution in the way we do healthcare we are going to switch from treating disease to preventing disease and i wanted to share with you a little show and tell this is a chip this is called the m chip it is fda approved for use because it can detect psa level for you sitting at home can you imagine you can insert this in your cell phone very soon right now it comes with a little device where you have to insert it and you can find find out if you have prostate cancer or not if you have prostate cancer you can monitor if it's advancing or not this is the ultimate in biotechnology and this chip has been developed with the help of biomedical engineers at columbia university why am i saying all this because do you know that 90% of the people who are working in highly successful tech companies 
those that are making drugs and devices, those that are making scanning and uh, digital technologies assisted by artificial intelligence, they, 90% of their staff, can you believe, is non-technical. You know why they are employed, these non-technical people? Because without understanding much of technologic detail, they understand the needs of humans better. They have the power to communicate effectively. And above all, they are doing all this because they have learned empathy. It is the single most important virtue to perfect, how to show empathy. It wins you the ultimate material and spiritual success. You know, Adam Smith, the great economist, pointed out in his book, The Theory of Moral Sentiments, that humans want to be loved, but they also want to be lovely. What does that mean, want to be lovely? It means that they want to be loved for the right reasons. And you know where you polish those right reasons to become lovely? Through the liberal arts. When you study philosophy, you learn to question, to reason, argue, to think things through. You study literature, especially when you read the classics. What they have in common is that their themes are grand, their language is noble, and their message is startlingly fresh for all times. You learn through literature and through reading fiction to coach on the experience of others, to stand in their shoes, to feel what they felt, real empathy. You realize that Arabian Nights is not about revenge and adultery, but rather about the complexity of lives and the motivations that move people. When you study history, you begin to get a glimpse of how we got here. Who were the heroes in this journey and why? Who are the villains? What did they do right? What did they do wrong? And then, of course, there's my own favorite discipline, poetry. Through poetry, you learn to become concise while being creative. To me, it comes closest to molecular biology because in two lines of a couplet, a share, you encapsulate the same kind of macrocosm expressed in two strands of DNA. You understand how the throbbing, pulsating, effervescence of life in a single drop of blood can drown the vastness of the inorganic, unfeeling, indifferent, dead planets in the universe. Arzo sama kaha teri busat ko pa sake, mera hi dil hai wo ke jaha tu sama sake. Only my heart has the largeness to embrace the anguish. Or what it means when the poet says, Suwe mein kada na jate, to kuch aur baat hoti. Wo nigah se pilate, to kuch aur baat hoti. Wo hawaai gul sitane, mere dil ki laaj rakhli. Here the power of agency. Wo hawaai gul sitane mere dil ki laaj rakhli, wo naqab khud uthate, to kuch aur baat hoti. Ye baja kali ne khil kar kiya gul sita maut tar, agar aap muskurate, to kuch aur baat hoti. And then the last shair for which I have read this, Go haram ke raaste se, wo pahunch gaye khuda tak. وہ حرم کے راستے سے وہ پہنچ گئے خدا تک تیری رہ گزر سے جاتے تو کچھ اور بات ہوتی What is this رہ گزر? 
How do you get to walk in this? This is what you learn to understand through a study of the liberal arts. My own personal journey involves a very painful aspect where bad news has to be constantly shared with patients and their families. Again, I learned to do this from another great poet, this time Emily Dickinson. Tell all the truth, but tell it slant. Success in circuit lies. Too bright for our infirm delight, the truth's superb surprise. Like lightning to the children, eased with explanations kind. Like lightning to the children, eased with explanations kind, the truth must dazzle gradually or every man be blind. It doesn't mean you don't tell the truth, but you tell it with empathy. Tell all the truth, but tell it slant. You don't break the spirit of the person. I did not have the luxury of a liberal arts education. I entered a vocation, medical school, at the ripe old age of 18 at Dow Medical College. But you know what helped me somewhat develop at least a love for the liberal arts? The grand culture and the thousands of years of tehzeeb that we come from. How proud we should be of the background we have. As soon as we can speak, we are made to memorize, among other things, Mir and Ghalib, Anis and Dabir. What other culture has that? And once you understand their meaning, even of a single couplet, and you appreciate their aesthetic sensibilities, you cannot help but be completely ravished and seduced by it forever. And this is a love which comes, as Khusro has said, Khusro Darya Prem Ka. So, Ulti Waki Dhar. Khusro, this is the river of love. It flows backwards. Khusro Darya Prem Ka. So, Ulti Waki Dhar. Jo Ubra So Doob Gaya. Jo Dooba So Par. You are so ravished. You cannot just touch it superficially and go away because then you are lost if you remain superficial. The only way in this river of love, the only way to reach the other end is to dive deep. How lucky you are, students of Habib University, to have access to both your amazing culture and this liberal arts university to be the inheritors of this magnificent courtesy culture wrapped around millennia of nuances developed through practices of decency and civility on the one hand and to have the formality of a liberal arts education that matches any Ivy League university education in America. Please, please, I beg of you, I beseech you, recognize your great good fortune and take advantage of it. Pay attention. Learn how to express your empathy properly. You may be feeling it, but maybe you're not able to communicate it. That communication skill will come to you through the liberal arts education. Nawab Zada Sajid Lakhnavi ka kehna hai ke Ganga Jamni Khasdan me se Chandi ka varak lagi hui paan ki glory mu me rakh kar sahi labo lehje me adabars kehne ke liye bhi kam as kam char naslo ka rachao darkar hai. That is how long it takes to become truly cultured. And you are so fortunate that you come from a culture where you have inherited this grand Bessie. So I end by speaking to the most important group in this webinar. 
that of our wonderful audience. Thank you that during this month of Ramzan, you have taken out the time to link to the webinar. As we face this pandemic together, the globe has shrunk once again, and the oceanic connections of humanity is front and center like never before. No man is an island entire of itself. Each is a piece of the continent, part of the main, and therefore never sent to know for whom the bell tolls. To the audience, I say our future is at stake. The challenges awaiting our youth are immense. More additions to Google and Wikipedia are not going to be what they need. In fact, they have too much information already. What they need is to put all that into context, to learn to think critically, to tell right from wrong, to prepare for the challenges coming their way with unfortunately lightning speed. They will best develop the strength of character that they will need, even while solving technical problems through the power of creative and critical thinking and steadfastness of will. They need to learn how to put their heart and soul into the project. I end with the words of Faiz Sahab. <laughs> फिर हुक्म में हुजूरी पर हमने आंखों के दरीचे बंद किए और सीने का दर बाज किया शुक्रिया वाओ वाओ थैंक यू अदर आपा आई अगेन हैव द अनएनवियेबल टास्क ऑफ ऑफ फॉलोइंग योर वर्ड्स अम थैंक यू फॉर दिस अम सो वन ऑफ द the key missions that Habib University has embarked on is to create a curricular experience that would allow our students to understand themselves from their point of view. Uh, one of the very few post-colonial liberal arts curricula uh, which exists in the world. And no self-respecting civilization uh, would have um, uh, their intellectual institutions which are completely submerged by someone else's point of view, even when they are trying to understand themselves. So that's one of the key missions and thank you for elaborating that. And, and our pursuit of this mission, of course, as you acknowledged towards the end has been made possible by this, this absolutely inspiring, generous, empathetic community that we have. On behalf of uh, our host committee, uh, which is resource development committee of of um, Habib University. It's my great honor to request uh, Bashir Ali Muhammad Saab, who, is, who also chairs the Resource Development Committee, to, uh, to, to share his thoughts uh, with the audience, which I am told are in excess of about 600 already, uh, Zoom and, and, and Facebook combined. Uh, so Bashir Saab, you will have to unmute your mic and please uh, enlighten us with your, with your thoughts. Thank you very much, uh, Wasif. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody in Ramzan to, you know, make themselves available today. I think uh, it's a great time to be together to in memory of Ali Habib. And uh, so first of all, let me thank the Resource Development uh, Committee of Habib University Foundation as chairman of the committee for attending this webinar and encouraging all the other participants to join. I would also like to thank the Habib family for participating in this webinar and for contributing their thoughts. And a special thanks both to the speakers, you know, Raza Aslan and Azra Raza, I think we are very fortunate to be able to get global perspective from these two insightful experts. 
So thanks to all the friends who have participated, especially those who have supported the university through their contributions. My relationship with the Habib family has been a very long one. I mean, it started with my father pre-partition. We've been together and uh, the Habib family played a great role in the foundation of Pakistan. We have always su supported them fully and uh, our elders taught us to build a new country and serve the society. They started housing projects, community projects, Habib schools, and we started the Doraji community project. And our families have served Pakistan side by side, so much so that the late Ali Habib and I have been next door neighbors for nearly 40 years. And we've been traveling together to Islamabad every month or every week. So, you know, I am probably one of the closest persons to him because sitting next to him, driving together to the airport, back, going to the meetings, coming together. So I think for me, the loss is much more than I think for most people. And uh, the whole family is uh, very close to us. And we feel, you know, the only thing we can be is to be with them at this time. So that is when, just when Rafi Habib shared the vision to create the, a world-class institution of higher education, and he asked me to come on board, I was very happy because I realized that only a liberal arts education can save a country like Pakistan today from where we are. And I think we are very happy that this institution has now become a world-class institution. The broader, the vision was unique in ensuring that this institution would be collectively owned and supported by the community, which we understand to a hallmark of all great universities. The broader ownership makes a university unique, highly impactful and accessible to all the segments of society. Such institutions around the world have become a point of convergence for various philanthropic interests and platforms to nurture multiple legacies. And we are fortunate to have one such institution in Karachi in the shape of Habib University. I have the honor of being the founding board member of the Habib University. I'm also the chair of the Resource Development Committee of Habib University, which comprises many exemplary and stalwart members of the society, including Arif Habib, Tofik Chinoy, Amina Sayyid, Narkis Surti, Shahbaz Yasid Malik, Muhammad Ali Habib, Saida Habib, who joined the mission in the early days and has contributed in extending it forward and has always been with us. One of the key aspects of the Habib University that is influencing the broader conversation on philanthropy itself. We are beginning to think of philanthropy not just as charity, but as a key institution building, especially in higher education. Such institutions in USA are great examples of a broader community support and ownership. In Pakistan, it's even more crucial because being the fifth largest con country in the world with a young population, we provide very poor access to higher education. With philanthropic support and co-ownership of this cause, we have seen how a world-class university like Habib University becomes accessible to all high merit students from every background. And that's the only key to rebuild our society, to cultivate leaders from all backgrounds. The mission can only grow with the support of the wider community. 
this need of a great community ownership has never been more urgent than in the face of this unprecedented crisis and challenge. Many of us are acutely familiar with the enormous economic fallout of this crisis. It's inspiring to see how many community leaders showing even more generosity to support and protect the most vulnerable in society. I am personally inspired by this wider ownership of the community, which is represented by all those attending this session today. And I'm sure my late friend Ali Habib would have been comforted to see that there are so many who are stepping up to support and preserve this great legacy and protecting the futures of our youth. I have a message from uh, my friend Tariq Rafi, who has who could not be here today, and he would has said that in Ali Habib's name, he would be giving at least five students the this year he would be supporting. And uh, there are so many others who have also pledged their support. So I think this is going to be a very important year for all of us, especially with all the difficulties we have. And I'm very happy that we have so many people here today. So I would not like to take so much time. There are so many people and it's Ramzan. So I'd like to thank you all very much. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. What a heartfelt message. How moving and how appropriate. Um, as usual, uh, we are indebted to your guidance and your support and your love and your empathy all throughout. And, and thank you for, uh, for urging the community to, uh, to step up and, and, and uh, take a great part. Uh, it's my uh, great honor to, uh, to have the second rep representative from our uh, Resource Development Committee, uh, Ms. Nargis Surti. As I had indicated, she is um, you know, one of the first ones without even seeing way before Habib University was a physical reality. And she has been uh, among the first ranks of our supporters. So Nargis is going to represent the Resource Development Committee as well. Nargis, please. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Habib University management and RDC members for organizing this event. Thank you to our wonderful keynote speakers for providing us with insight and inspiration. Thank you to all friends and supporters who have participated to be part of this webinar, especially in Ramazan. It's my honor to represent the RDC committee and say a few words at this occasion. Ali was a greatly patriotic. He founded and led multiple ventures that contributed immensely to the national development. Habib University is one such endeavor, and I will take this liberty to add that this was his greatest passion, and his guidance and mentorship will be missed. But we, inshallah, his legacy will live on. Shahid and I, like many parents, experienced the dearth of high quality, higher education in our country firsthand when, our, when the time came for our kids to go to university. And so when Rafi Hunter, Ali Habib, and Mohammed Ali Habib shared their vision of creating a world-class university right here in Pakistan, competing with those in USA and Europe, it was like a realization of a dream. I'm humbled to be amongst the very early supporters and co-founder of this generous institution that continues to provide life-altering and transformative education to students from all backgrounds. What specially inspires me and my colleagues on Habib University's foundation board is that Habib University is one of the most generous universities in the world. 90% of the students at the university receive scholarships and financial assistance, 90%. This generosity is also crucial since many of our most talented students require this aid. This is a huge undertaking and it wouldn't be possible without the wider co-ownership of this course by the community. 
and in times of extreme crisis like this pandemic, the question of this co-ownership and support becomes even more crucial. Like all our speakers who mentioned, this is the time when we have to come across as a global community. Karachi is known for its extraordinary generosity and it's on full display in this pandemic as the people have stepped up to protect the most vulnerable through food and medical aid. Let's step up to protect not only the present needs, but also the future ones. So thank you and I look forward for everyone's support in this. Thank you, Nargis, uh, for as usual, your generous words, uh, your support. Um, I know that how uh, uh, you and Shahid uh, have been so close to uh, late Ali Habib and, and how you have been expressing a continuous sense of uh, sympathy and support for the family and, and for all their causes. So thank you. Now we have a, a, you know, a, a very special guest uh, representing Ali Suleiman Habib's immediate family. His, his older son, Imran Habib, is with us. Imran Habib is this wonderful and enterprising young man uh, who is also um, the executive vice president of um, Habib American Bank in New York. Uh, in this very difficult time for his family, uh, still, you know, that uh, shows uh, this wonderful focus and commitment that that family has. That he has, he, he very generously accepted to be uh, representing um, his family in this webinar. So I will request Imran to um, to share his thoughts. Thank you, Asif. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you here today. On behalf of my grandmother, my mother, Ms. Munize, my sister, Elise, and my brother, Mikhail, I extend my family's sincerest thanks to Bashir Ali Muhammad, Arif Habib, Amina Sayyid, Muhammad Ali Habib, Nargis Surti, Shahbaz Malik, Taufik Chinoy, and Zaida Habib, the eminent members of the Resource Development Committee, Habib University Foundation, for putting together this online event, which is the need of the hour. I'm joined by our esteemed keynote participants, Dr. Azra Raza and Dr. Raza Aslan. A very warm welcome to you both. My father, Mr. Ali Suleiman Habib, was indeed very fond of Azra Raza and considered her a great friend and asset to the Habib University community. He was also very honored to host Raza Aslan at our home and commencement speaker at Habib University last year. To our community of friends and well-wishers who join us here today, I thank you all for your participation. Today's topic, preserving legacies and protecting futures, is not only relevant to the business community at large and the fraternity Ali Habib represented, but in fact to all organizations who endeavor to surmount the challenges that lie before us. My father had a unique way of doing business. By empowering his teammates, colleagues, partners, shareholders, and our family, as he journeyed on furthering the Habib legacy in Pakistan. He devoted himself to becoming the very bastion of this legacy, and today I stand before you reassured that the future of the Habib legacy is in safe hands. Ali Habib was the epitome of success in every sphere. He developed the Habib businesses against all odds, which will continue undeterred. Time and time again, my father was called upon to assist the government of Pakistan with a multitude of challenges. He did so graciously and with a sense of pride in fulfilling his national duty. Ali Habib's belief and selfless devotion to philanthropy was indeed remarkable. He truly believed that the Habib family could serve the future of our great nation through business, education, and social welfare. He would readily contribute his time, money, and expertise to the development of the nation from the very grassroots in order to create a lasting social impact. Habib University found a special place in his vision and heart. He often talked about joining as a visiting faculty in order to share his tremendous wealth of knowledge and experience with the young people of Pakistan. He was always so eager to inspire them with the promise of opportunity. He embraced the idea that the sign of a great university is that it has a wider community ownership, a place where the youth of the country, irrespective of class, creed, or socioeconomic background, would be provided the skills needed to better themselves and the country. 
I'm proud to tell you today that a majority of the students who seek out an education in, in the Habib University corridors do so on merit and with scholarship. My father also reiterated the need to run our business as well so that we could continue to support the university. We all intend to fulfill his wishes to the utmost. I'm indeed fortunate to have had one of the greatest mentors and teachers for the last 37 years. My father was an inspiration, and like many of you here, he has left me with a treasure trove of memories. He's often talked about succession and continuity, and as I stand before you here today, prepared by his guidance and armed with his timeless wisdom, I'm confident that his many missions will continue by all of us with the same zeal and fervor to honor his memory. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for joining me here today and being a part of our journey. I hope that together we can continue to do good, be better and bigger than ourselves, unite collectively as Ali Habib would have wanted us to and carry on the work that he was so passionately inspired by. Thank you. And salam to my children at home in New York and my wife. <laughs> Thank you, Imran. Uh, you slipped in your age there. Uh, you don't look at all 37, though. Uh, next week. Next week. <laughs> right. Now uh, it's the time to hear from the man himself, uh, the visionary, the force behind um, initiating even the idea of Habib University. Um, I remember meeting with him in his office in, in, in 2009. Um, when, when this journey started. Um, our founding chancellor, uh, the patriarch of Habib family, um, the, uh, the leader of our community, uh, Mr. Rafi Habib. He will also very graciously uh, lead the, the Fatiha towards the end of this event for uh, Lady Ali Suleiman Habib. Uh, so I invite um, our chancellor, Rafi Habib, to say a word of thanks and also lead the Fatiha for Ali Suleiman Habib. RMS, please. I am deeply grateful and humbled by all that has been put together. The wonderful speakers. I cannot add anything to all the things they said. All I can say is that Ali Habib and my relationships not only go back to his birth, but our working life was more than 40 years. And he had a profound impact on the family, on the business, and on the country, I have lost a son and my right hand. But one has to accept the will of Allah in Allah and And we have to go forward. I'm greatly comforted that the legacy of Habib University is supported by compassionate, robust, an engaged community in Pakistan and globally. I would once again like to thank everyone for joining and request you to join me in a short prayer, a fatiha, for the departed soul. He will be greatly missed. Thank you. Bismillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm Ad-Deen, Iyaka Nabadu, Iyaka Nasta'een, Hedin Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, Sirat Al-Lazina Al-Amta Alayhim, Bayr Al-Maghubi Alayhim, Al-Azwani, Bismillahi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Kullu Allah Ahad, Allah Samad, Lam Alam Yulid, Walam Yulad, Walam Yakulluhu Wa Kufwan Ahad, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qulu Allah wahad, Allah samad. Lam wa lam yulid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakulluhu wa kufu ahad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.
before we close, no, I uh, yes, sir. Um, I just want to thank uh, everybody, especially our uh, host committee, resource development committee, but also our team from behind the scene, the, the CEO of Habib University Foundation, who has been, uh, Pervez Riyas, who has been tirelessly engaging in calling everybody and his team and, and all the, the technology team, uh, Chris Taylor, uh, our um, Dean of Faculty, um, uh, people working in the office of the president at Habib University, uh, all of you um, ha have done wonders and especially all of, you, of your audience. So we, I'm, I'm sh uh, really pleasantly astonished to see the participation. We have about 700 people still watching in the middle of Ramzan in Pakistan, um, continuously engaged. Uh, even uh, what is really, really inspiring is that many of them were able to get what Azra Raza's poetry meant. So, so most of the comments are about the beautiful choice of, uh, of, 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 of uh, 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 this, this uh, collage of poetry that you put together, Azra Apa. Uh, but I, I am I'm humbled as the president of the university. I am actually more encouraged uh, in, you know, in very dismal times that we have passed in the last two and a half, three months. But I, I guarantee you that, that uh, me and, and, and our team, our students and our faculty, uh, this couldn't have come at a better time, this phenomenal inspiration. And it has reminded us uh, of our mission. It has rooted us back, grounded us back. And, and uh, we will be uh, uh, doing everything to make all of you um, uh, renew and, and deepen your commitment to this wonderful institution that uh, our, our champion, late Ali Habib, uh, helped found it so passionately. Um, so again, uh, thank you all. Um, please um, uh, have a blessed rest of Ramadan. Um, please send your prayers and thoughts to, uh, to, the, to Ali Suleiman Habib's family. And we will, inshallah, be continuing to see in touch. This is seemingly uh, much easier to get hold of all of you. It, it, it would take us three months to put a meeting together of the board with all of these eminent personalities. And it took us just a phone call. So, uh, so this, is, this, this won't bode well for you because it's, if it's so easy to get, get in touch, we'll be doing that more often. Thank you, Adab, Khuda Hafiz. Have a good night. Thank you.